Welcome back to What's Up Cuz. How do your boys feel about their sister having a boyfriend? But I would be doing the same thing! Yes. You don't get along with me, there's a problem. <laughs> your family's opinion matters. Buddy had unexpected foot surgery. If you like the guy, go talk to him. That's probably the advice I would've gave too, I have to say. No, not at all. I raised her well, yeah. Erica. You made a good call. That's how I would approach it. She gets the days, I get the nights. Before she goes, I wanna answer this first. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to What's Up Cuz. I am your co-host, Erica Spera. And I'm Lisa Velastro. And we have a special guest for you guys this week. For the first time on the pod, everybody please get very excited for Mauro Castano. Yay! Yay! I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, thank you for coming on. <laughs> no problem. Thank you, Mauro. Cousins, man. Cousins, cousins and sister sisters. Cousins and cousins. Sisters. <laughs> sisters. Sisters. Uh, so how have you been? Anything new with you? Um, you know what? Everything's good. I like that. I like when everything stays the same, you know? For me, that that's good. Yeah. People say, hey, how you doing at work? You know, no change. I'm like, that's good. No change is working. <laughs> I'm living. My family's good. That's no change good. is good change, I No guess. change is good change, no change but everything's good, good. Everything's great. Feeling good? Nice. Yep. That's good to hear. I know. You have all, almost all kids out of the house, right? Almost. Partially, partially, uh, Dominique is partially still home on the weekends. Buddy's there. Then he's not there. Mary's mostly with uh, Paulie and Rant, so it's all good. Another year or two, and then hopefully they'll be set up. We're waiting you know? for Paulie to pop the question. Yeah. Yeah. What are you waiting for, Paulie? <laughs> I don't know. Paulie, I think Paulie's uh, trying to stretch it as much as possible. Ah. You know? Because I told him it's a one way street. Once you get engaged and married, they're gone. That's it. They're all That's yours. It. That's what my father in law told me. She's all yours. That's the final cutting of the string. That's it. That's it. Well, at the time, you weren't working at the bakery, though, right? When you met Madeline? When I met, I, I, no, I wasn't. I worked at the bakery as a contractor. That's how I met Madeline uh, in 1988. Oh, okay. We built the bakery that's on uh, on uh, Washington Street right now. Right. That's how I met my father in law. And then a, a year later, he called me and he said, oh, I got an extra job for you to do. You want to come? We had done work for him before. You want to come look at it? I went there and he says, oh, you know, I got some work, but it's going to be in a little while. I want to I want to introduce you to somebody. And then she wasn't there that weekend. But did you know accident. that somebody was Madeline? No. So you had no idea? No, he never told me who it was. I, then he told me, I got my daughter Madeline, go to 412 Adams. You know, there's some work over there I want you to do. And then you could meet her. And then the following Saturday I went. And then the following Saturday, we went out. That was September. We went out the first time, September 16th, uh, 1989. Wow, <laughs> you remember that day. I remember that. You know, I remember it because it was San Gennaro. That's why. Uh, I remember okay. that day. Oh, you it just passed. Days? Yeah. Right, four or five days ago. So. Wow. Yeah. So how many official years have you been together with Madeline? Not married, just everything all together. 89, just think about it. 89, 22, 33 years. Wow. Wow. 33 years together. I was only nine years old. <laughs> yeah. Well, you were young when we met you. How old were you when we met you? I was uh, 19. 19 years old. I wow. was 19 years old. And the first party that I went to in the family was Dominique's second birthday. Dominique's oh, second yeah. birthday. Yeah. And you know what I got her as a little gift? What? You know, the little character Madeline? That oh, show yeah. Madeline? Oh, a little picture frame, show? Madeline picture frame. See, ooh, see, she remembers see, that. I remember see? that. <laughs> okay. All right. Short I remember good. the first birthday. I don't remember the second birthday. <laughs> I did, so many. Did, so you basically were set up by Buddy Buddy. Yeah, by Big Buddy. buddy. Senior. Yeah. Big Buddy. Set yeah. you up. You did by some work buddy. for him. He's like, I like this guy. <laughs> I guess, yeah. We had done, we had done, we did a few houses for him, but he was just, but my former buddy was, was, was just, if you didn't get along with him, you had to be a real a hole. Like, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's like, what I heard too. Everyone, if it, you didn't it, love him, then there was something wrong with and you. And if, even if mm -hmm. you were, if you were one, he still liked you. So it was like hard for him not to like you. It really, really wasn't. I yeah. never met a guy that, that's why we called him buddy. That's why everybody called him buddy. So everybody just got along with him. It was mm -hmm. everybody's buddy. Mm. You know? I remember going to the bakery very young because he died. I was very, very young, but I remember being there and him putting whipped cream in my mouth. Oh, really? Yeah, like I remember, because I didn't like whipped cream. And he uh, was like, oh, it'll be so fun. And I remember just sitting there being like, and my mom comes up, she's like, you could spit it out. It's okay. Yeah. That, and um, what are the seven layer cookies called? Seven layer Seven layers. Oh, seven, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like there's an Italian name for it. I never remember. Uh, those were my favorite. And he brought out the whole tray in front of me. And he was like, take as many as you want. And I like looked at him and I took two hands. And, grabbed, and I remember my mom yelling at me. She's like, Erica, you can't take that much. And yeah, he, he was, was like, one of those okay. guys. He was one of those guys who kept shoveling food in front of you. And then he yeah. would tell you, oh, you're gaining weight. I was like, well, <laughs> he just, we would go, Monday night was steak night, right? So you were, he had an indoor barbecue. So you would go there, steak, winter or summer, he had barbecue. Mm -hmm. Remember on, uh, on, yeah. on Mariani? Yeah, Mariani. Yeah. 
So like when we when you went there, he would have like, you know, especially me, I was a big boy doing then now it's a little flabby, but back then I was a little more, you know, stronger <laughs> doing construction. And he would have like two steaks for me, but I'm talking about steaks, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, and I was like, Pop, I ate one. I, I can't eat two. No, I just eat it. Then at the, the you know, if he saw you doing the other way, uh, you gotta watch, you're gaining weight. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, thank you. <laughs> it's so funny because even though I knew Buddy's dad before Buddy and I got together, mm -hmm. um, I really never officially met as my husband's, you know, girlfriend or whatever. Yeah. But the stories that everyone tells, it's it feels like I did meet him. It feels like I was around when he was around. It's crazy. Yeah. I know. It is crazy. You, you did meet him. I did meet him, and I, I, but I have a very vague memory of him. But it's like mm -hmm. being, I think I was two when he died. I'm trying, like, I was very, maybe four. I was very young oh, in you the bakery, but I vividly remember. I thought you were older than that. Nah, because I was, when Nona Grace died, I was only like eight. That I remember. That was like the oh. first, that was the first wake I went to, where like someone was in the wow, casket yeah. and I was in the lawn. Who had surgery as a baby? Who? Who had surgery as a baby? I did. She did. That's oh, me. that was you that had yeah. the, the heart surgery? was me. That yeah. was you? Yeah. And Buddy drove. And I remember my father-in-law, yeah. mm -hmm. I just got in his brand new Mercedes and he told, I, re I remember him telling <laughs> mama, this week we're going to go see, we got to go there because the baby just had surgery and we have to go up there. And he took, and he had just gotten the, the, the convertible Mercedes and mm -hmm. he went up there. I remember that. Well, I remember it was a big deal that, well, he drove my grandmother up. And they yeah, took my my brother back down because I was like in the hospital and stuff yeah, for yeah, yeah, yeah. weeks. But uh, but I remember my dad looks back at that and he's always like, man, he's like that man ran a business and dropped yeah, everything. Yeah, he dropped everything. I remember that. To that just dropped, drive, just to drive up there. I remember, yeah. yeah, I remember him saying that. He was talking. I don't know if he was talking to. I mean, he might have been talking to Cosmo, to, to Uncle Cosmo. Probably. He would think he was talking. He says, yeah, we're gonna go up there. We're gonna go up there. And he goes, oh, we're going up there now. And I remember, I remember we went up there. I do. That was you. That had, that's right. I that forgot was it was me. you I that had the yeah, surgery. That was Erica. Yeah. And everything is good, right? With that. Yeah, uh, no problems Girl. ever since. I still do. That's great. Checkups, Boston children. Yeah, I'm, I'm always a part of weird studies <laughs> that they try to see if heart surgery links to everything. Like everything went good, thank God. Yeah, yeah. No, no. thank God is right. Yeah, but see, I, I met I met Buddy Senior before uh, I met him as a child. Yeah. We used to go in the bakery all the time. Yeah, mother was um, a customer. Yeah, we used to go next door to um, Bart's house. Then Bart, oh, we went to Mariani. Mariani. So Bart we always saw door. him outside, but again, never saw him as a couple. Yeah. So it was crazy. So it was a big, it's a big family, but it's, it's small. Everybody, knew, yeah. everybody knows yeah. each other. So, yeah. I know. you know, I'm sure he would have approved. You were, you were the yeah. girl that was always down the street in so. the neighborhood. I think so. He would have liked the picture frame. <laughs> yes, he would have <laughs> <liked that. laughs> been like, that's a good one right there. That's a keeper. Yeah. Yep. Um, uh, what, any updates from you, Lisa, before we get to any questions? Any updates with me? You guys are going to be mad at me. Really? What'd you I do? I chickened out on my colonoscopy this week. Really? <laughs> I did. Straight up chickened out? I straight up chickened out. What, what made you back out? You know, I need to be mentally prepared. <laughs> 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 um, never had a colonoscopy before. I know I'm a little young, but unfortunately my aunt got diagnosed uh, with colon cancer recently. Mm. And she's young. She's yeah. in her early 50s. And um, I, I was just like, let me make an appointment and go. And then, you know, at one point I was excited because, you know, all the prep you have to do, I heard people say, oh, you lose like five pounds. <laughs> oh, because you got to drink all that stuff, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, it's just like liquid, right? Yeah. Can you only have liquid And, and for you know, you feel days? nice and light after. But when it came to it, like the week of, a couple days of, I'm like, I don't know if I'm mentally prepared for this. Really? It's not so, the intrusion I'm ready for. <laughs> <laughs> so I did. I canceled it, but... um. I am going to reschedule it for the new year. Do it I because, have to. God forbid, it's yeah. always something yeah. they can help you with. You know, my husband went away on an unexpected trip, so he wasn't here either. I'm mm -hmm. like, I need support. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, so boohoo, I canceled my colonoscopy. I mean, <laughs> I've never had one, so I can't, I can't come at Ooh. you. Have you had to have one? Uh, yeah, I, I, I have the same thing. My, I'm a, I'm a, older than her. I mean, I'm almost 50. I'm, I just turned 58. I'm going on 59 and I have to get them done because it was, right. yeah. you know. But I never forget the first time I went to, I, I, I get checked up. The guy goes, you know what we do? And he explains, I'm like, what? <laughs> what? Why well, should you tell me? Yeah, the guy goes, no, no, I didn't know. Like he explains to you and the guy said, we put, I goes, he goes, we could put you to sleep or we could, no, 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 doc. You, not vaguely. I want to be put asleep. I don't want to remember anything. <laughs> 
I don't remember anything. You um, know, and I'm just, I'm disappointed with myself because I do so much preventative because, you know, there's a lot of things that run in our family. Mm-hmm. As you know, Erica, we've talked about on the podcast between, you know, breast exams, hysterectomies and all that. I, d- I take care of all that department. Yeah. But when it comes down to the colonoscopy, <laughs> I chickened out. I just have to just go. Yeah, my mother died of ovarian cancer and I tell my daughters all the time, yeah. whatever you do, once a year, go get it checked. Yeah. yeah. I said, uh-huh. it's in the family. Mm-hmm. Do, don't, don't, it's nothing. Yeah. Just let them go get whatever the hell it is that they do. Let them do it. It's it's true. You know, my my grandmother died of ovarian cancer. Oh, really? I didn't so, know yeah, that. she did. My dad's mom. And she was actually, she was 43 when she was diagnosed. Mm. She was uh, my age. So um, that's why for years I've been on top of that department of the body. Yeah. Uh, and apparently, um, did you know that ovaries and, and, and uterus and breast cells are kind of all related? I would assume. I, I, I didn't. Know. I didn't know that. I would assume until. they're all related to your hormones. I don't think I have any. Put it that yeah, way. yeah. You don't have any of those, Marl. <laughs> so, so we'll skip the subject. But yeah, yeah so it's all related. So it kind of like is a kind same type of cancer, I guess you could say. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, but you should go for it. If there's history yeah. in your family, anything, man, you know, even, it, there's nothing to yeah. be embarrassed about. Just, but we're turning this into, into, into an announcement, like a yes. public service announcement. But go get it done. Don't yeah. be a chicken. Mm-hmm. Preventive way. Preventive medicine is the best medicine. You're right. That's mm-hmm. why I'm going for my colonoscopy in January. New Year. <laughs> After the holiday. New Year. I'm going to start out. a Clean new year. <laughs> yeah. I know. I was like, the eating wow. part is just hard. That's it. All liquids. All right. Well, speaking of colonoscopies, <laughs> <laughs> we do have some fan emails we'll get to for today. Uh, guys, if you want to send us an email, it's what's up cuz pod at gmail.com. That's what's up cuz pod at gmail.com. Send us your questions. Uh, so this was a fun one. I figured it might be nice to have with a man's opinion on the show. Uh, oh, boy. This email is called Found My Son's Porn. Okay. All right. Uh, How are you doing? <laughs> okay. Dear Cuz, uh, my teen boy has been watching porn. How have you handled things like this? My wife and I discovered recent pornography on my son, in parentheses, he's 13, on his phone. I realized that someone during puberty and in high school setting is curious and unfortunately subjected to that topic from time to time. Despite knowing it was inevitable, we are not sure how to handle it. Do we ask why or explain the negative eh, oh, negativity and psychological consequences of it? Do we react at all and possibly put a gap in our relationship? I'm kind of uh, curious here what others have done if this has ever happened to you. Thank you for the advice. All Oof. right, Mauro, you answer this one first. <laughs> I know what I would say, but do you want to go first on this uh, one? I, uh, I, I mean, the man perspective, I've, I've, my son has with his cousins, because we're very close, you know, they were always hanging out, whatever. And I remember he was a little bit older. Yeah, he had a baby 13. And, they, you know, he starts, you know, they don't ask you, but we, we know, listen, as a yeah. man, I know that he's watching it. <laughs> Anybody who says that they're not watch, they don't think their kid is watching it, or they think to themselves that they're not watching it, they're just lying to themselves. It's like looking in the mirror. What'd you do? You know, mm-hmm, I, yeah. I did it. They did it. Uh, I tried not to. I tried not to get into the conversation about it. But basically, I told him it's not something he should be doing on a cell phone or on a computer. He'll learn about it sooner or later. Mm. I said it's better later, but it's the wrong place to learn about the birds and the bees. That's yeah. what I told him. I like that perspective of being like, it's not real. It's yeah, it's a <laughs> fantasy. It's 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 not it's not the place to learn about that. Yeah, this is not really what happens. You can't tell them not to watch it because if you tell them not to watch it, I think it's gonna make it worse. They're gonna wanna watch it. Mm-hmm. Listen, you, I, I'm a realist. I'm a realist. You know, all through these years that I I, I say it how it is. Mm-hmm. Sex, pornography, it's part of life. Um, I have three boys and a daughter. If you think that your teenage son is not watching pornography, then yeah. you're living on a different planet. That's mm-hmm. it. So for me, whether I know about it or not, in my mind, I know they're doing it. Exactly. It's normal. I hate to tell yeah. you, but it's normal. Whether you like what I'm saying or not. And there's also different levels of well, yeah. yeah, those different types. You could be watching yeah. different yeah. levels. You could be watching. I mean. You could be watching <laughs> like a regular TV show, and you see basically everything that you see there. Be you know exactly. They cut some parts out, I guess, but especially this day and age. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that the TVs have gone a little bit more open with a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, like I said, I'm a realist. 
if I find out about it, how would I approach it? I wouldn't. It's normal. Mm-hmm. Let them do what they want to do. And and we're old school people too. Like, like I, I'm old school. I think she's old school too. I'm old so, school, but I'm realist. Re, but she's a real. Well, yeah. being old school, I think is realist. Like, yeah. We said yeah. Before it's it's not a real world. So you know, like I look at like 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 she said. Um, it's not like I think that he's not looking at it. I always knew he was going to look at it. She yeah. was going to look at the boys mm-hmm. and girls. Yeah, both, it goes yeah. both ways. Do it. Yeah. You know, and um, listen. I'm raising my kids completely opposite than how my parents raised me because, um, you know, what they told you was taboo. Don't look this way. Don't do this. Don't do mm-hmm. that is actually terrifying. Yeah. A- a- and and porn, sex is not terrifying. It's it's the reality of life. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's part of life. It's part of life. And I think the more open you are with your kids from a very young age, the more comfortable they're going to feel with you to talk about it. Mm -hmm. I'm extremely open with my kids. Maybe I know a little bit more than I would want to know. But whether I know about it or not, I know it's happening. And I want them to have a safe place to come to ask me things, whether it's embarrassing or not. Listen, I know they're not going to tell me 100% of things, nor do I want to know 100% of things because certain things are private in life. Mm-hmm. But if there ever is a problem that they need help with, I want them to feel comfortable enough to come and talk to me about it. And I always tell them, whether I'm going to like what you're going to say or not, I will always be here to help you fix the problem. Right. And not that watching porn is a problem, but porn leads to other things. And... You don't want them to learn have. those. Also, you don't want them to learn those things from other people. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you don't exactly. want them to learn from other people because then yeah. they're gonna get they're gonna get curious and they're gonna want to maybe be adventurous and do the wrong thing. Exactly. So you might as well be. You know, there's a level of where. Yeah. I would like to go, me personally, but. <laughs> Listen, know. there's been questions that I've had to take a gulp and a deep breath <laughs> before answering. Yeah. But always remember this: the way you. The way you answer that question for the first time is the way your child is going to perceive you. Mm -hmm. So that first response is going to make you or break you with the relationship you're going to have with your kid. In Italy, there's an old saying for for fathers. uh, Translation, the strictest fathers grow the best. (laughs) (laughs) Because you're so strict. I'm not letting my daughter out. You know, my daughter's not going out anywhere. As soon as she gets a little bit of a sniff out there, woo. Listen, I do believe that. I believe believe that. that Because the stories that I've heard, the college stories that I have heard, Uh I'm like, wow. College. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. uh, yeah. My my hometown would be like, oh, those Catholic school girls are the ones that go wild at college. And it's because they were the biggest told no, slap on the wrist with the ruler, like. The real strict, strict, strict. And then once you let them out of the cage. Mm-hmm. The more you say no, 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 no to your child, the more they're going to want to do, 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 do behind your yeah. back. Yeah. And that's just the way it is. And again, I know I don't know everything my kids do, but at this point in my life with my kids, I think that we are somewhat open with each other. And again, I don't know 100%, but I know enough that... Mm-hmm. It's like a dog in a leash. You got to know when to pull him back and uh-huh. when to just let him go. Yeah. No, you're right. He, he's right. Yeah. You know, he's right. And even though models are a little older than me, I think we we kind of see the same page on the way, you know, his kids are a little older than mine too. But I think we see it on the same page. We'd rather know, know stuff than not know and get lied to and, you know, right. something bad happen or… Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. Like I rather my, my I like when my kids are over with their friends, mm-hmm. you know. Especially, well, now they're older. They pregame at the house, so yeah. they'll come and pregame whatever. Mm-hmm. And then they'll go out at eleven. I used to be terrified that, but you know what? I sleep very well because even I'm sure she does mm-hmm. too. I know that my kids, even though they're out till what two, three o'clock in the morning, I never got a phone call. I mean, buddy's what twenty three. He's the youngest. Yeah. yeah, I've never gotten a phone call in the middle yeah. of the night. Oh, you got to come and get me. I'm drunk. Oh, I'm in this. I got into a car. I, mean, I you know, like God forbid. I, I don't wish that on anybody. But so far, I got more again. I haven't got any phone calls mm-hmm. that they've been like trouble or anything like that. I don't think any of us really did. Yeah, yeah but it gets in a little bit, whatever. But yeah, yeah but it's stupid crap. Nothing major. No, yeah, it's nothing all major. Stuff. Something nothing probably could avoid it. Yeah, instead like, of like being stupid. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So. For the mom or dad that sent the email about their son watching porn, 
Go with Let it. Them watch it. <laughs> Go with it. <laughs> well, if anything, I was like, be thankful that nowadays it's like on their own phone. Yeah. And yeah. not on the family computer. Yeah. As I grew up with, when it was like there were no like antiviral software. So uh-huh. like Computers would always get these viruses in every household. They'd be like, where are these viruses coming oh, from? Or you go on your Google search and you try to push something. And also like, wait a minute. I just Googled tires. Why did this? What the hell yeah. is this? And you push that and you're like, what? Yeah, like, who searched this? Uh, it's just this on the who computer. Who searched this set of tires? Yeah, but it's like it used to shut down the whole family computer. Yeah. So be thankful that that's not happening. Yeah, at least. True exactly. Um, but uh, I, think, I think that's all we have time for today. Oh, thank you. That was know. quick. That I know. was nice. I was like, thank you for coming on. This has been no, so fun. You'll come on guys. again for us, Matt. Yeah, I will. Anytime you guys want me on. Yeah. Anytime. We I'm just available. like to BS about reality. Oh, wow, that was quick. I like that. <laughs> I mean, that's not bad. That was right? quick. No, we definitely got to do it again. Yeah, you have to come yeah. do another one. Maybe we'll do one together with Madeline. Yes. Ooh, yeah. We all have two yeah. guests that day. Yeah. yeah. That'd be fun. We got another chair. We can make it work. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you guys for listening. If you want to email us a question, it's what's up, cuz pod at gmail.com. That's what's up, cuz P O D at gmail.com. So thank you again, Marl, for coming on. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll see you guys next week. Till next time, guys. Bye. Bye.